guys and welcome back. So today is all about explaining my uh, training methods that we've been that we've been working on and what we are using at the moment to train little Schmidt to be a well-behaved little pup and he's doing very well. We're still learning a lot as you can see but uh, we are getting somewhere. Okay, can we come down from, from my lap now? Okay, can you sit? So firstly, we are using the, the clicker. We're using clicker training at the moment. How we introduced it is when we first got him, we, we would just give him his food. And then every time we give him his food, we would click at the same time so that he associates the the food and the treats with the clicker and then from there we started training him and we started with the basic things like look at me and we started with sit and then we started um, introducing down as well and at the moment we are working on some leash training and stay those are the two things that we also introduced come on can we come down come he loves sitting on my lap can you sit thank you so you'll see that i only use command once because he already knows it and i know that he knows it so i will give him time to adjust and to just process what i asked him to do and then from there i will reward him how we started with the training is instead of using extra treats and not his food we started by immediately using his food as treats and using meal time as a training tool so that we can train him in the time that he's supposed to get his meals so for breakfast time what he does is he is super playful and energetic when we wake up and when we wake him up to go potty and then when he comes back he's really energized and ready to start the day so then what I do is I do some scatter feeding and I do that in the crates. So what we'll do is I'll sit on the couch and then the crates is like next to me. So he knows that every time he goes into the crates, I give him some treats. That's how we incorporate the crate training. So every time he goes into the crate, he gets a treat. See how well he is adjusting now. Now, like even when he does one paw on my lap, then he immediately switches back because he knows that he's supposed to be off my lap when he wants some food so with the crate training we just scatter food in his crate and then we'll feed him there his breakfast time now the scatter feeding is a really great tool to calm your pet down so you kind of just throw food in the areas let him sniff and look for the food by using his nose and using his senses and through that he will then eventually calm down because it's actually more of a focus game because he needs to focus on you know where the treats are where the food is and that calms him down that is something that i learned from the puppy school that we are attending now so that is what we do for breakfast time also i am still fast asleep for breakfast so i'm not really in a training mood so it's a great way for me to just sit on the couch have my tea and then just throw his food in his crate and in his playpen so that he can just get um stay calm while i'm also still waking up so that's what we do for breakfast time and then what we do is during the day we would do like two maybe three training sessions like this it takes like five to ten minutes where we just uh, train him we uh, focus on a, a bunch of different things we don't purely focus on one thing and take it one thing at a time we do different things so that he doesn't also get bored okay can you go down for me so he's really adjusting well to all of the commands and we are still using the word uh, for a command and not using only like a hand gesture or anything like that. Look at me. Yes. Now, with the look at me training, the, the most important thing is he will always look at the treats because that's the thing that he wants. But how we train him is he needs to make eye contact with me. And you can see if your dog is looking at the treat or if he's looking at you, like in your eyes. And that is the thing that we are looking for with the look at me training. He's really glued to my app today. Come. See, he immediately looked back when I use the clicker because he knows that when the clicker goes, then he'll get a treat. And then in the evenings, we also do a good play session and some training before going to bed. And that really helped our sleep patterns get into place. At the moment, we are in a routine of playing with him and then training him for a bit. And then we go to bed at around 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock. And then we wake up again at five because that's when he needs to go potty. So the potty training has progressed in the sense of we don't have to take him out every single night every two to three hours there are some nights where he will cry a little bit and then we would take him out and then he wanted to go potty now the big thing with crate training and a big plus thing for crate training is dogs don't like to go potty in the area where they sleep if you have a crate at home then it's a great tool for you to 
just make sure that the potty accidents don't happen because dogs don't like to go potty in the area where they're sleeping. So he hasn't had an accident yet in his crate because he sleeps there and he doesn't want to go potty there. So he'll actually cry and cry us awake so that we can take him out to go potty. We don't set an alarms anymore. We just go on when he wakes us up and then we kind of work accordingly. The other thing that we also were, uh, we were working on, look at me. So look at me. And that's a really, really great tool and something that you need to start incorporating from a very early stage because you want your dog checking in with you with uh, through eye contact um, every now and again so that they know that you're still happy and that they're doing the right thing and that they will get treats for, uh, for doing that. So the look at me is one of the most foundational things that you have to use. The other thing that we were also working on is leave it. So leave it. So we're still using the hand for leave it because he still is like really, really young. So he's not there yet where he can just leave it for a good amount of time and you don't actually have to have your hand there. He knows the hand gesture for sit. That's the, because that's the one that we started with. So you can see like we started with sit and then we started. <laughs> Did you see that jump? We started with sit and then we went onto the down. Now he, you know, he knows still the lure technique with down. He doesn't know the gesture. But with sit already, because we were working on so many different things, the sit is the first one. So now we can see that the sit command is basically there. A great tip is when you are practicing leave it, make sure that you're not giving him the treat that you asked him to leave alone. Because in the biggest scheme of things, like if you're cooking in the kitchen or you're doing something and you drop a piece of food or something, Thing, you want him to leave it but then if you train him in a sense of you he needs to leave it for just a certain amount of time and then he gets what he has had to leave in the beginning then that that's going to happen with the food that you drop on the floor he's going to leave it for a, a short amount of time or a longer amount of time but eventually he will go for that food and we want to train the dog so that they can leave it permanently like that isn't yours that's the one that we are focusing on and then another tip that I can give is when you have a puppy, because they are teething, they love biting and they don't know that, you know, biting is sore for us and we don't like it and, and all of those things. They, they, they are just doing what they feel is normal and what's, what's natural, of course. So when I feed him and some mornings I will feed him from my hand just directly. I won't do any training. I would just feed him from my hand. And the purpose of doing that is to teach him how to take the food gently from my hand. So I have the treats in my hand here and he would start nibbling on the treats, but he's still biting. So as soon as he stops biting and starts licking, then I give him the treat so that I can teach him how to be gentle, whether it be with food, whether it be with toys. I'm going to teach him how to be gentle with things that he is around because if he goes and he plays with kids or babies or any any like any dog or anything like that we want to teach him how to be gentle and not just like go for it and bite everything so i will give you guys a quick update um, on the lead training that we are also focusing on now so we are already progressing a little bit um because <laughs> at least he's following me now a little bit smoother um after training for about three minutes and we're just walking in the house i have the bag of treats here in my pocket and i'm just leading him with the treats training him to stay close to me while we are walking in the house with the harness and the lead on he, it doesn't seem like the lead is bothering him anymore so that's good we are making progress and we are just going to continue this for the next couple of days until we can get the lead and then get him comfortable to me holding the lead while walking him. <laughs> I don't know what is going on with this jumping situation. There we go. So thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. I appreciate you all and I hope you have an amazing day. Come let's say bye. Come, 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 come. Here we go. Here we go. Now I can be in my lap. Say bye.